Hello people of YouTube, my name is Brad, this is my channel Animate Orange and welcome to the review video for the 1935 Duesenberg Model J that I have right here in my hands. This is a fantastic looking model, very stylish car from a very stylish time. This model from Metal Earth is listed as having a medium difficulty build. It took me three hours and 30 minutes to cut out, shape, and put together all the parts building this model. The instructions were fairly straightforward and pretty well laid out. I didn't run into any problems under understanding the instructions. No situations where I disagreed with things. The model comes together pretty plainly, pretty understandably, pretty straightforward. It's probably listed as a medium difficulty simply because it does have a lot of detail in this model it's just just a lot of detail to it it isn't a plain car this is a fancy car it's got some parts that require a little bit of time to just shape and put together it does have a lot of obvious detail and color to it at the top you've got the interior you've got front and back seats the interior is a different color than the exterior the exterior has you know white along the side of the hood and kind of a deep red on the rest of the body you have the white wall tires the silver wire rim wheels you have the silver grill got the luggage in the back the different colored like luggage case because i don't think this was technically called the trunk back then it was kind of a luggage luggage thing on the back and you've got detail of the top which is kind of collapsed down here on the bot on the back so much detail on top you can kind of see the gauges on the dashboard a little bit. It even has you know, steering wheel, it's got gear shifts, it's got pedals down there. So it's got a nice amount of detail, the hood ornament. It's got lights all the way around it and whatever these are, I'm honestly not even sure. Well, side view mirrors probably, duh. Those are probably side view mirrors. But even underneath it, I love how the underneath, you can see the detail of the bottom of the, what I understand is a straight eight engine. You can kind of see the transmission. You can see the exhaust coming off of one side and going above the rear axle, which the rear axle has some detailing to it so that you know that that's a rear axle. Tailpipe comes back down and sticks out the back. I love that they have that added bit of detail in on the bottom of this model. And one of the things that I enjoy, and I occasionally comment on this, one of the things I enjoy about making these Metal Earth models is it makes me interested in the real thing. And I'm a little bit of a car guy. I'm not a car nut. I don't know everything there is to know about cars, but I know enough that I maintain my own vehicles and no difference between a V8 and a four-cylinder and such and such. And I know that this Duesenberg has a straight eight, which is kind of a unique engine. You don't really see those in production cars these days. Just really fascinated that this has a straight eight. And you think about it, most cars today, you talk about V8. V8 the cylinders are four side by side. The engine block is fairly short. This thing had all eight cylinders lined up in a straight line, which is why this hood is as long as it is. And that engine actually just does fit in there from the pictures that I've seen. It is a tight fit because it is a long engine block, long kind of narrow engine block. I couldn't help myself. I went to Wikipedia, I went to the web and looked at information about it because I just wanted to see what it had under the hood because that oil pan did look nice and long and straight and I this is from Wikipedia the straight 8 Model J motor was based on the company's successful racing engines of the 1920s and though designed by Duesenberg they were manufactured by Lycoming another company owned by Cord in normal aspirated form it produced 265 horsepower from a dual overhead camshaft and four valves per cylinder now I don't, again, I don't know a ton about cars, but from what little I know, that's pretty good for 1930s. That was a lot of horsepower. Overhead cam was not something you normally saw in a production car until maybe the 80s or 90s. Uh, even, even in the 80s overhead cam, you didn't see much in the way of dual overhead cam unless you got kind of fancy. And four valves per cylinder, that's something you still don't see standard today in cars today. I don't think I could be wrong correct me if I'm wrong but dual overhead cam four valves per cylinder 260 some horsepower in the 1930s that's pretty impressive this was apparently a fast car anyway didn't come here to talk about the Duesenberg and all the information on that though I will say I will say that there was a supercharged version apparently of this called the SJ 
and it had a supercharger on it and to make room for the supercharger they had to modify the exhaust manifold and ended up I think the first design cracked and it didn't work out well so they ended up taking the two cylinders into one pipe and you had four pipes coming out the side of the hood and then down into the fender to follow this exhaust to the back so this is listed as a J model and not an SJ and that would seem to add up as you don't see any exhaust sticking out the side of that hood. I could be wrong about that piece of information. Feel free to correct me in the comments. That was just some quick searching online to find out that bit of information. And again, I've already mentioned the instructions were pretty straightforward. It didn't run into any problems with things being mislabeled or instructions that I didn't agree with because sometimes with these models I look at it and I go, you know, you want me to do what? Or I don't think that's the best way to handle it. With this model, everything went pretty straightforward and pretty clear and and it was really easy to understand. And maybe some of this is after coming off of a micro world model, which I had numerous problems with the instructions. Nothing terrible, but it really made me appreciate the, the simplicity of, of Metal Earth instructions and how they, for the most part, have the right information in there. And you don't have to go hunting for parts that are mislabeled. Sometimes things happen, not to the level of, say, what I dealt with with micro world. I love the styling and I love this model. It is a little bit tiny but that's metal earth for you. They tend to come out that way. If my, my two complaints on this model though, I will say my two complaints is the one is the spare tires on the fender don't want to sit up. I expect that they would sit kind of up flat like that, but they tend to just flare out. And these fenders, maybe I'm doing something wrong, but I just can't quite get these fenders and side, side runners or whatever to sit like I think they should sit. And honestly, if you look on the metal earth website, it is a similar situation. The model that they have listed on the 360 view also has the wheels kind of tilted out a little bit. So I don't think it's just me, but I think it's entirely possible. There's some things I could maybe do better, but I'm not sure what that is. I fiddled with it for a while to the point that I ended up pulling this little side strip off of one side and had to put it back on with twisted tabs because then it wouldn't stay. And it was shortly after that that I just said, you know what, this is as good as it's gonna get for fear that if I kept trying to mess with it, I was going to break something without being able to repair it. And I thought, well, at least I should make a video about it first before I don't have a complete model to review. Other complaint would be just the design of the lights. There's two headlights, there's two lights beside these wheels. There's also two tail lights, and they all have that kind of teardrop kind of dome back shape. And the, the lens and the dome shape are all one piece. And found that a little bit frustrating to have to shape that delicate part while it's attached to another part. I managed, I'm not, I'm a little disappointed at how they turned out. Some of that's my fault for instance reading, reading the instructions on the back. I don't know what happened but I misunderstood and didn't fold them right the first time and had to redo them. You see a little bit more about that in the build video and that probably made these tail lights come out a little worse than they could have. The ones down here in the middle, one went fairly well the other one not so much it was just difficult trying to shape that cone shape and then flip it up behind the lens without messing anything up if i had it to do again i'd like to think i could do a different method than what i tried and get it a little bit better but i still think it would be some part of it that just wouldn't quite turn out right so those are my two main complaints however tiny model sitting on the shelf for the most part you're not going to notice that but if you look closely it's one of those things I built it I know what's wrong with it it's always gonna bug me but other people may or may not see it now for things to look out for on this model because I do want to touch on a few things if you're gonna build this model you don't want to take the time to watch the whole build video you've got a pretty good idea of how to put these things together there's just a few things that I want to say watch out for one of them with some of these newer colored models that Metal Earth is coming out with occasionally run into a situation and I ran into it with this where a slot is blocked by a blob of paint or it got painted over. Maybe not even a blob, it just got painted over. Easy fix. I've got some pointed tweezers. I take one of the points and poke it into the hole. The piece usually just pops right out. Easy to clear. If you don't have tweezers, maybe the tip of an X-Acto knife or maybe even a, a bobbin pin, something just to poke in there to poke that paint out. It pops out really easy. So you might run into a situation where tabs doesn't seem to fit and if you look at it closely, oh there's a blob of paint. It seems to be the black paint is the most offensive in all of this. So I think most of the times that I've ran into a problem with this, with the Hogwarts Express, it was the black paint that was covering up the holes most of the time. Not all the time, it's not exclusive, but it seems to be the black paint tends to want to get in places it doesn't 
need to be. I, I don't know, that's just something that I've kind of noticed, but it's not exclusive to that one particular color of paint. It's any of these newer models that have a lot of painting on them, it's, they're prone to have that. It's just a minor inconvenience, not a big deal at all. When it comes to the braking clutch, or braking, yeah, braking clutch pedal down in there, I think it's part, part 25. One of the things that I did, because it's one of those pieces that attaches with the tabs that are on the edge of a part you have to fold down, they don't have their own fold lines or a separate area that folds down. When it comes to parts that have these tabs sticking out that you have to force down, they don't always fit as well, especially if you don't bend the tab just right. So I bent those tabs and attached the part to the panel, and then I bent the pedals up and around like I was supposed to, because sometimes with those particular connections, you have to put some pressure on them to get them in place. And I thought it'd be a bad idea to fold the pedals up first and then have to put that pressure squashing the pedals accidentally. So I waited until after that. Again, if you have something pointed like pointed tweezers or maybe an X-Acto knife, you can, after the parts on, carefully slide under them to bend the, bend the pedals up to shape them as need be. The spoke rims, the center pieces for the rims, the thing I almost didn't catch at first is they actually have a little bit of a dome shape to them. So you need to kind of bend the edges in a little bit or out a little bit, up, whatever orientation you want to consider it to get them to fit. I originally tried to put them in there just flat. They were too big. You have to kind of shape them a little bit. I didn't really, couldn't really make use of a dome shaping tool because they have that center cap with the two tabs. Maybe if I'd have bent the tabs out, I could have, but it's not the direction I went. I have some rounded in tweezers that was able to bend up the edges fairly easily and they fit well. And then you've got the two slots that, that are used to attach it to the rest of the wheel. I kind of bent them back out straight so you would have room for that tab to go in. The front bumper is one of the things, one of the things with my plan to do is I didn't curve the end pieces before attaching it. I thought that I would just basically use the shape of the part that's behind it, just kind of push it around that and use that piece to help shape that curve. What I didn't take into account is that bumper actually has an open slit most of the way around it that uh, pretty much prevents you from doing that. You try to use that as a shape, it just goes over it. And I had to actually uh, take time with some round nose pliers to manually shape it. Thought about shaping it before you put it on there, but then you run into the issue of how you're going to get it over the tabs before you make that curl. So just something to be aware of, a minor detail that not that hard to overcome. When you're putting the body onto the frame, there's four tabs that hold it on and two. Two of them are in the back and easy to see, but the two up front are actually hidden they're hidden somewhere under the front suspension, right up under the rail. So you have to kind of look in this way and look in that way for the other side to see those tabs. It took me a little bit of time to figure out where they were. For a while I thought they were just hidden in there and I wasn't going to be able to secure them. And then I held it at the right angle and saw it. Not really enough room in there to grab and twist them. I was able to fold them over, but if you're looking for them, look right around the suspension area, kind of inside of the rail to see the tabs are it's all black in there, so it might be a little hard to see, but the tabs are in there. Probably easiest just to put some sort of hook in there and fold them over to secure the body to the frame. And lastly, when you're putting on this rear fender, the rather short piece, there is one tab that, that connects it to this panel, this step here, and there's another tab that goes inside where this back seat is. And when you're connecting those, the back seat isn't in yet. What I recommend is don't twist those tabs. Try to fold them over. I twisted the tabs and what happened is one of them poked in such a way that it was difficult getting this back seat to sit in place and line up the two slots with the two tabs on this side. And to pull the seat back out, untwist and fold the tabs over to get that seat in there. So save yourself the time and trouble to just when you put these side back fenders on the inside tab, fold it over, don't twist it, just fold it over. It'll be out of the way when it comes time to put the rear seat in. Really, when it comes to things to watch out for, there's not much for this model. Again, it's pretty straightforward and pretty easy to understand, easy to put together. It's listed as a medium difficulty, and I don't think it's listed as a medium difficulty because the parts are difficult to put together, but just because there is a fair amount of detail to it. And that's why it took three and a half hours and not two, two hours and two hours and something. I really thought that when I did the math of all the video that I recorded for this, that I was going to come up with something around two hours, maybe two hours and 15 minutes. I was kind of surprised it was three hours because it didn't feel that way. It kept me entertained, it kept me engaged, and it, the time just kind of slipped by. 
it's not because it's overly challenging or difficult to put together. It just takes time to shape all the parts and put in all the detail. Fun little build. I really enjoyed it. It was a lot. It was nice coming off of the Micro World Cathedral build. It was a really long build, although it came together nicely. Put this together, it came together very nicely. A couple little trouble spots, but really not crying and complaining about that. And to this model, really well pleased with it. A little disappointed in these side wheels and I fiddled with them for a while but I just finally gave in. Overall I think it's going to look great on the shelf and it was a fun and enjoyable build to, to put together. I think also this is going to make a fantastic addition to a little Metal Earth garage that apparently I'm working on. The Packard goes, or the Duesenberg goes beautifully with the Packard that we already have. A couple of classic and similarly, similarly sized models plus we have the Ford models that have just recently come out. Got a few of those ready for me to build. Just got to get to them. Looks like I'm going to be making my own classic car garage. And I'm kind of excited about that. Another fantastic thing about the uh, painted models is you don't have to worry quite as much about fingerprints. At least I don't with these models because they don't, they don't seem to gather them as well as much as the silver models. And they certainly don't stick out like the silver models. Fantastic build. Fantastic looking classic car. You know one thing that I'd love to see? I'd love to see some model engines. Some of the motors that come in these cars. Some of the, well, we can start with some of the more popular ones like the Flathead V8 or a 350 Chevy or something like that. I don't know. Some some interesting looking models. Maybe some straight sixes, a slant six. That would be kind of interesting to put together. It'd be interesting to see a Duesenberg straight eight model. Maybe even move into some airplane models. Anyway. Fantastic model and fantastic build. I do want to say thank you to Fascinations for sending me this model to build and review. I very much enjoyed it. Very much enjoy having this as part of my collection. Thank you for watching. If you want to see the full build video, there will be put some links to that at the end of this video. And uh, see you next build and next review. Thank you also to my Patreon supporters for continuing to support this channel. I'll leave it at that. As always, keep on keeping on.